Okay, tomorrow, this great country of ours, land of the free and home of the brave, at least we hope it's that way, <laughs> we hope it stays that way, but we celebrate and honor the people that have given their lives for this great country. I think we have probably maybe only one veteran today, but we're not honoring them today. We're thankful for our veterans. But the ones we're actually recalling to mind today is those that never took a uniform off, those that died in the uniform. And there have been many. I did a little uh, research uh, yesterday as I was preparing for today. I had no idea at how many people died in our wars. The Civil War alone, 620,000 men died and this great country in which we live here. World War II, 54.6 million people died. Now that's worldwide, 54.6 million. Now, the toll here, the Civil War took the greatest toll on this country because it was brother killing brother. People in their own family. And it was the saddest war to me that's ever been fought in this country. But because of what happened, the Memorial Day came into existence. But let's read, if you will, the paper, uh, if you have there a copy of the scripture that I plan to dwell on this morning. John 8, chapter, uh, John 8, verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye had lifted up the Son of Man, that meant lifted him up on the cross, then shall ye know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him, on Jesus. Then said Jesus, to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And she, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son, S-O-N, abideth ever. And if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. After the Civil War, it ended in 1865, started in 1861, but following the war, in Columbus, Mississippi, 
the Confederates went and decorated the graves of their lost loved ones. By the way, I noticed a while back in the cemetery at this and uh, some of my family's old tombs, and, but I've noticed since then, and Linda and I, do, we, we read a lot of history in the cemeteries, or markers and what have you, but when you see written on the, some of these old stones, and there's a bunch of them if you'll go into the cemetery and look, it has C-S-A on that. Y'all know what that means? C-S-A. Folk, you can't erase history, and that's what people are trying to do. Confederate States of America. That meant they fought for the Confederate State. And they fought for state rights. I think we should, should, should fight for states' rights. Because California votes to do something doesn't mean Texas has to do it. Right? We don't want to do what California does anyway. Because right. <laughs> it's usually not right. Uh, but in 1868, General John Logan of the Republic Army Commander-in-Chief, he declared May the 30th to decorate the graves of those who had died altogether, both Union and Confederates, in the Civil War. It was later changed to the last Monday of May and to include all war dead. But originally it was called Decoration Day. Uh, they would go and decorate the graves of those men that had died for our freedom. But folk, I want to remind you and myself that we enjoy freedom because others have died for our freedom. They have suffered. They have been wounded. And today I see people, especially in a modern day war, their, their face is all burned and disfigured. Their limbs are gone and what have you. They have done that that you and I might enjoy being right where we are this morning without uh, being bothered by anyone outside. Many different wars have been fought for the freedom that we enjoy. But we have the greatest freedom of any country in the history. Now, the folk just don't take it for granted. Men and women died that we might enjoy the freedom of which we are part of even now. We don't have someone sitting in the back telling us what we can preach or teach or believe or sing or what, what we can do as we worship our Savior. No one tells us what we have to do. No one tells us we can't do it. 1968, I made my first trip to the Holy Land. And a bunch of the people got together because we were wound up in Athens, Greece on Sunday. So they said, hey, let's all get together down here in the lobby of the hotel and we'll have a service. The hotel said you can't do that. And he pointed to a man there in a long black robe who was a Greek Orthodox priest. He was like a bird dog. He was there to make sure we didn't have a worship service as Baptists do it. And they wouldn't allow us to have a Baptist service because it was not uh, on the same plane as the Greek Orthodox Church was. So they don't enjoy the freedom that we do. We all take it for granted that you can do it without provocation. But folks, this is truly the land of opportunity. Especially when it comes to God's Word. 
God's word is hated by many people because it condemns certain styles of life. But because it's hated, doesn't change it. God, when he wrote his book, the 66 books that make up the Bible, said what he meant and meant what he said. And we can take his word, and today we can preach it freely here. But that's not true with every place, is it? But folks, this is a land of opportunity. If you don't believe it, go up here to a place called Benton, Arkansas, Bentonville. Some years ago, in a, the poorest state in the Union, Arkansas, a man by the name of Sam Walton took advantage of the freedom that we have here, and he began what we call Walmarts. And it grew probably the largest real estate uh, business that there is today. Although I understand Amazon's giving them a pretty good run, but uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, I believe, is his name. But these fellas started a business because they had the freedom to. And they've multiplied and so forth. The point I'm trying to make is it's a land of opportunity that some people have taken advantage of. But it didn't come cheap. Men have died for the freedom. They did it in the beginning and they've done it since to maintain our freedom. Uh, matter of fact, we finished what's called the Vietnam War, and I think this week was the anniversary of the Vietnam War. And a lot of men died and women died in that war. But it was to maintain, my understanding, the freedom which we enjoy. But bloodshed and freedom it seems to have gone hand in hand. I'll give you a little history lesson this morning. I never was too much of a history buff, and I, I realized after I got out of school, it had a meaning and significance. Did anyone know who Nathan Hale was? And what he was famous for his saying, Nathan Hale was born in 1755, May. He lived 21 years. At 14 years old, he went to Yale University, graduated at 17. But he, along with his five brothers, joined the revolution, the American Revolution. You've got to realize that's the year that our independence was signed, July the 4th, 1776. But in September the 12th, 1776, General George Washington asked for volunteers for spies on the British Army. Nathan Hale volunteered. It was September the, the 12th. September the 21st. Nathan Hale was arrested and without a trial was hung on the gallows by the British soldiers because of being a spy. He confessed before he died. But do y'all remember what his last words were before he died? Y'all know y'all just, it, it'll dawn on you when I say it. You just didn't know who said it. His last words were, I regret 
that I have but one life to give for my country. Let me say it again. I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Now when Brother Bobby took an oath to go into the Korean War, he had to pledge his life, did you not, brother? That's right. Any other soldier that may have been here today or a service person, we're grateful for your sacrifice. Nathan Hale gave his life willingly for you and I. Don't take that for granted, folks. What greater thing can you give than your life? Our Lord said, what shall it profit a man? If he should gain the whole world and lose his own life or soul, meaning the same thing. Folk, life embraces Everything that there is. But Jesus spoke of freedom, didn't he? he? You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Freedom and blood go together. Verse 32, if you look back at your page, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And then look at verse 33. They answered him, oh, wait a minute, we Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They understood not that they were servants of sin. We will look at verse 34. Jesus answered to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant or slave, meaning the same thing, doulos, of sin. And they understood not. And our Lord showed them that they were slaves to sin. Folk, I gotta tell you, without God, men are slaves to sin and Satan given over to a power which alone they cannot control. I said alone. No cure aside from God. Jesus said to them, I will make you free. Look at verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. Verse 32, he said, The truth shall make you free. Now he said, If I make you free, so that makes he the truth, does it not? He said, The truth shall make you free. And then he said, I shall make you free. So he and the truth is one and the same. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What about the bloodshed? Our Lord was about to be hung on the cross. And ultimately he was. But under the law, before our Lord was crucified, under the law of Moses, when the commandments were given, they were also given a, a command to offer up a blood sacrifice each year. The high priest would go in, he would kill an animal, a male of the first year, spotless, and he would take the blood of that animal and he would sprinkle it before the mercy seat inside the Holy of Holies before God. I said they'd take a lamb and do that. 
when John the Baptist was down by the River Jordan baptizing and our Lord came on the scene, what did John the Baptist say? Behold! It's him, folks. It's him. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God. He didn't say the king. It was the Lamb. And folks, that hadn't changed. John the Baptist pointed us to our Lord Jesus Christ, did he not? And we weren't there in person. But the first disciples were, weren't they? But Jesus was to be their lamb, and he is the lamb. Folk, when he comes back, he's not coming as a lamb. He's coming as a king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's going to gather us together with him, and we're going to get to rule and reign with him forever and ever. And all of our loved ones that's gone on ahead of us with the Lord, we get to embrace them again. Well, what kind of hope does a non-Christian have? None. There is no hope. The Lord said our faith is not in vain if it's in Him. He was nailed to that old rugged cross that we might be free from sin. Offered up as a blood sacrifice. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because they were crucifying the very Son of God. Oh, but he let them, didn't he? He said, they don't take my life from me. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, the power to take it up again. And folk, he did. He defeated death, didn't he? And he did that we, might, that we might be free from sin, even the penalty of sin. But let's read on your paper the last words. John 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Folk, that's what Nathan Hale did way back there previous to the Civil War. He laid down his life. But Nathan Hale was a sinner like you and I. He couldn't pay the price that our Lord paid. Our Lord was without sin. But he became the penalty for sin when he allowed them to nail him to the cross and take that life from him that you and I live with him forever. And greater love hath no man. And folk, if you give your life, what else is there to give? Folks, that's what our Lord did for us. So as we remember those soldier boys that died by the uniform on, let's remember there was a greater love than even them because he died for our sins, didn't he? And that was our Lord. Some of you had relatives that died in the wars. We all had people that were friends.
that gave their ultimate, they gave their life. I'm just a small boy. World War II ended. But I remember well my next door neighbor, a boy that had gone to service. And I remember them coming out and knocking on the door. The Miller family, and they said, your son Frank has been killed. He's not coming home. He paid the ultimate. Somebody's door and say, Folks, your son ain't coming home. I lost two sons. I said, I could come so your boy, we don't think he's gonna make it. He got a lot of brain damage. Sure enough. all that possible because of one being, the one that made us in his own image, our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we get to live with him forever. I bemoan losing my son. Well, we get to live together from here on out. Just get started on it. Says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But we're not miserable because we know the Lord's got a better place for you. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may be also. Folks, I believe that promise. You're here this morning, you haven't embraced that promise. If you haven't turned your life over to the Lord, we beg you to do that this morning. But now we have that Ricky and Linda to come. We're going to have an invitation song. If you're here this morning, you need to make a move to the Lord. Well, we encourage you to do that. If we stand together now and have to sing. 524. 24. Cinco veinticuatro.
We ask all this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Don't get lost. Don't get lost. Thank you.